We're here in Duluth, Minnesota this week to highlight the differences between diesel buses and propane buses during wintertime operation. We're here at Voyager Bus. We've got a diesel bus and a propane bus here plugged in. And we're going to take some temperature readings. We're going to go through some various tests to see how these things will perform in extreme temperatures. Tom, what was the temperature last night here? So last night it was 18 below zero was the actual t temperature with wind chills down between 30, uh, 30 to 35 degrees below zero. This morning we woke up to a balmy 13 degrees and it's about uh, negative 13 degrees. And it's about negative nine right now as it stands this morning. Sure, so not, not uncommon conditions for this part of the country. You know, we're up here in northern Minnesota. Uh, fleets all across Canada, they face these same conditions regularly. Um, this particular fleet, um, Voyager bus, they did say that um, they start plugging their diesel buses in, some of the more, uh, the more problematic buses at 32 degrees. Most of them get plugged in at about 20. Um, the propane buses, what did they say they plug propane those in at? Propane buses, they plug in at zero. At zero, So just okay. before sub-zero. And then they've got a facility they actually park about a dozen or so buses in, uh, the buses that are more problematic and have a difficult time starting while even plugged in. So they keep those in a heated facility prior to route. Roughly. Okay. So uh, we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna go ahead and fire up some of these buses. We've got some temperature gauges inside of the buses. We're gonna take some readings and see how hot or how long it takes for these buses to, to warm up and get up to operating temperature. Absolutely. All the right. other thing that we did is we took a, a thermometer and we put it in a bus that was inside the facility and we set it on our route because we want to see how that bus w warms up while on route and holds the heat while on route. So we'll get that reading later as well. Yeah, great idea. All right, let's do it. So now we're inside the heated facility here at Voyager Bus and we want to see how a new diesel bus, the one sitting behind us, performs when it leaves the heated facility and goes out on its normal morning route. So Tom, how are we going to measure that? Well, today we took this uh, Easy Read uh, thermometer calibrated from the factory and we put it inside the bus before the bus was started up. We wanted to get a good feel for what the bus was going out temperature-wise cold. And then we instructed the driver to leave it set, run his normal route, which takes about an hour. Yep. He came back a short time ago, and what do you think the results were? Well, I would think the bus would be warmer. What'd we get? We actually had a, a drop in temperature. When we took the initial reading, the bus was 60 degrees Fahrenheit here in this heated indoor facility. When the driver came back about an hour and 10 minutes later, we saw a six degree drop in temperature. It actually came in at 54 degrees Fahrenheit. Yeah, so the bus is barely able to really keep the cabin comfortable for the passengers, especially when you're running into things like the entry door opening and closing and all these different stops. They do take different precautions though to try to build as much heat as possible with these diesel engines. So one thing is the heated facility that you have here, which is in the 50 degree range, but then you could also see this complete closeout winter front where you're able to block as much air to that radiator to keep as much heat in the engine as possible. Even with all these precautions on a cold day like today, the diesel struggle just to maintain cabin heat. So we're here at the remote lot at Voyager Bus Company in Duluth, Minnesota, and it's been cold. Overnight, we're down to about negative 18 degrees Fahrenheit, and it's only warmed up now this morning. As you can see here from our thermometer, about negative five degrees Fahrenheit. So both of these buses that we're about to test have been cold soaked. And what we're gonna do here is take a new diesel bus and a new Roush Bluebird propane powered bus, and we're gonna do a warm up sequence on both of them. So we're gonna take them from cold soaked, negative five degrees Fahrenheit in both, all the way up to what operating temperature would be after they're able to idle for a long period of time. Now, both buses are using starting aids to some degree. The, the uh, diesel powered bus has a complete winter front on it that we'll show you. And then both buses have been plugged into block heaters. Now I will say that the propane powered bus does not have a winter front of any either type. On the diesel powered bus also, it's starting a little bit ahead of the propane bus because the sun has been on the broad side of it. So it's been warming the cabin of that bus up about five degrees warmer right now than we're starting on the propane powered bus. So on the diesel side, we have a little bit of advantage. We're gonna start it first. We also have it in direct sunlight. The propane bus is starting a little bit behind the curve, but we still wanna see how both of these warm up. So let's get started with this diesel powered bus. All right, Adam here is gonna come over and unplug the block heater. Then he's gonna go through the normal start sequence, go through a complete block heater rotation. Wait for that wait to start light to go off. And it roars to life. Now the digital monitors that we have measuring the temperature inside are in the same location on both buses. On the diesel bus, I'll show you where it is. 
As you can see, we have the remote monitor here mounted right at the backs of the front row to give us a good measurement of what the driver's gonna experience and a lot of the passengers as well. We'll now go over to the propane bus and get that one started. Same way, we'll get the block heater undone. We'll climb on board. Now on the Roush propane powered Bluebird school buses, there's not a traditional way to start light. The start sequence is automated. It also doesn't have any type of air intake grid heater because propane is very versatile in the cold weather. And we roar to life on the propane bus. Now let's check where we have the monitor mounted in the propane powered bus. As you can see, same location that we had on the diesel powered bus, right at the backs of that front row of seats to give us a great idea of what kind of temperature we have for not only the driver's area, but the passenger compartment of the bus. So now we're gonna let these vehicles both idle, get up to temperature, and we're gonna measure that temperature at different increments to see how both of them heat up in this cold extreme temperature. So we just concluded our test here. We've got Adam coming out of the diesel bus. We've got Tom coming out of the propane Roush bus. And we've had these buses out here in the cold idling now for about an hour. And we've recorded the temperature inside the cabins as we showed you with those uh, digital units that were at the uh, front row of each bus. And we've recorded that temperature every five minutes through that entire hour from when we started all the way up now to just when we finished here at one hour. So uh, we've got some good results here um, and we've got some good observations too. So Adam, what did you see from the diesel bus when we started? Well, when we started the bus up, uh, it fired up right away. I mean, we had to cold, uh, we had to cycle it. We had to wait for the, uh, you know, wait to start lamp go off, but um, it started right up without an issue. So really, really no problems on startup. It had about a five degree head start on the, uh, on the propane bus. Yeah, that's right. This one started about four degrees warmer right off the get-go from the propane. And we believe that's because it's in direct sunlight, whereas the propane ver version down there is blocked by the other buses, not in direct sunlight. So yeah, it started out with a four degree advantage. Yep. So we saw that as we measured and we went up, we saw that disappear pretty quickly. So when you get to about the 10 minute mark, so just 10 minutes of that base idle, it had actually covered that four degree delta and was about base level with the diesel. And we continued to see that that trend climb on the propane bus. Tom, what did we see we, uh, we ended at there with the propane bus? Uh, propane bus actually ended uh, at over 50 degrees. 55.5. Uh, 55.5, and I think that was about 23.2 degrees greater than what the diesel bus ended at. Yeah, so through that climb, we saw where we covered ground at about 10 minutes, we broke even, continued to climb, and that gap started to really widen there at the 15 minute mark. And I see a note here at 33 minutes, the propane bus broke the 32 degree freezing mark. That's an interesting point because the diesel bus didn't break the 32 degree mark, go above freezing until the 59 minute mark. So right at the end of the test, the of the test. broke freezing. So big difference there when you look at the end of one hour of idling on the propane versus the diesel. You've got the interior, go ahead, Adam. I think the, and the diesel bus had every advantage. I think it's worth it. You know, it had a winter front on, um, it was plugged in, it was on high idle. It was started first. Yeah, it was in the sun. I mean, it really did have every advantage to, to outperform the propane, but it's still, uh, the propane bus just really walked away from it. Yeah, and I think really, if you think about the interior temperature, 55.5 degrees is at the point where you're comfortable. You're taking off your outer layers. At the diesel bus, after an hour of idling, you're still right at the freezing mark. So it did make improvements, you know, it did build some heat, but as Tom said, about 23 degrees difference between the propane to the diesel. So a drastic difference between the two of them. Another interesting observation Tom made was between the bus, the diesel that we took out on route this morning with the thermometer and the propane that was just idling. All right, since the bus has started inside the barn, the temperature controlled 60 degrees, controlled environment, went out on route, came back, had lost six degrees uh, Fahrenheit in temperature. That actually ended at 54 degrees post route. Didn't gain any, uh, the diesel bus did not gain any temperature. It actually lost temperature. Where our propane bus went over 55 in an hour at idle. Wow. Yeah, so you're looking at where a bus under load, where it should be making its maximum amount of heat, is not able to even keep up with just a propane bus at idle. That's really the difference about being able to bring in that cabin heat, keep the passengers warm and comfortable. And there's really a complicating factor now because Voyager here is still running under COVID protocol. So that means that they're not running these buses sealed up. 
they're actually having to do some unique things, right? Yeah, keep right. the roof hatches open, keep some of the rear windows open, so keep the airflow increased in the bus to try to move that, move that air around a little bit more. So as we talked to some drivers this morning, we found out that the more heat you can build, the happier the passengers are, the drivers are, the defrost capability is. So we got a lot of feedback from these drivers this morning that have driven as recently as last year a diesel bus and have been switched over to a propane bus this year. And the feedback was pretty unanimous, I would say. I don't think anybody wants to go back to their diesel buses. They're very happy in their propanes and they are basically mirroring the things that we saw in the study today. They build heat faster, they hold and maintain cabin heat longer, and everybody's more comfortable along the ride. So I think that's really the, the results from this are that we're seeing the same kind of results and feedback that we've heard in the field. Propane is the way to go when you're in the sub-zero weather like we are now. Absolutely. So now that we're uh, thoroughly frozen, I think the test is concluded. And uh, you can learn more about us and our propane products at roushcleantech.com. Thanks, everybody.